Right. Good evening, guys. Welcome back to the Malaysia Architecture Education Online Series, proudly presented by MASA. Hope you guys are doing well, and thank you for joining us tonight. This is actually our 28th lecture series so far. So for those who are still new, MASA is actually in full, is Malaysia Architecture Student Alliance, which is a non-profit student community acting directly under PAM, which is Pertubuhan Architect Malaysia. MASA consists of student representatives from all architecture institutes in Malaysia. During this time, MASA and PAM have decided to launch this online lecture series for students to be more productive and gain more insight. Architect Adrianza is the head of PAM Education and Dr. Zach Zairo is the converner. My name is Iris, a MASA representative from UCSI University and I'll be your MC for today. So tonight's topic will be manifestation of architectural design concept. I'll first introduce you our speaker, which is architect Faris Helmi. He has teaching experience of all range since he had been teaching since 2013. So students which are from Taylor's City University, Mara or Segi might not know him since he had been teaching there. He's also a director in Hilmi Farida Architects and Bahad and a principal in Architect Farida Hilmi. He's practicing balance between education and industry, striving to provide to the industry with quality graduates to support the industry locally and at an international level. All right, guys, so relax. We have a Q&A session at the end of the talk, but if you have any question during the share, feel free to type down in the chat box so we can attend to them at the end of the chat. All right, so without further ado, I would like to invite A.R. Faris Hilmi. Hi, A.R. Faris Hilmi. Hi. Hi, uh, so your computer's uh, webcam is actually off already. Just uh -huh. for your information. Okay. Yeah, okay. So I'll pass the ground to you, yeah? Okay, thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Iris. Um, thank you to uh, Pan Education Committee, MASA, and, and then um, family and friends. Thank you for joining today's uh, uh, talk. So uh, today is, um, we are talking about the manifestation of architecture design concept and insight for students understanding. All right, so um, this is, um, quite interesting topic because I believe um, many students have stru struggled uh, in uh, understanding in a uh, more deep meaning. All right, so as an introduction, let's go for the fundamental of the concept. This webinar is hopefully help architecture students to straighten up their understanding about the most complicated topic in design studio is the concept. A lot of students don't do it right. Either it is half cooked or not even related at all. And sometimes, most of the time, they start the concept after all the design has been done. Last minute work before uh, presentation also, this is the, the famous uh, thing. You design certain thing and then it looks like a wave. Okay, that's my concept, wave. Although it didn't uh, started as wave, maybe something like shell or anything else, but because maybe wave uh, sounds, uh, looks more cooler, okay, we go for that. But the thing is, it's not as like that, you know. Um, and then another one, um, if you don't get more uh, things, I also have my own uh, uh, architecture education channel. You can subscribe or share and give suggestion in my next video for architecture education tips. Yeah, I also have my own channel youtube.com slash farisilmi. All right, um, let's go for the agenda. Okay, I only have three agenda to talk on tonight. All right, um, what is the manifestation architecture design concept? Number two, the three pillars of architecture concept. This will be, I will go for the very detailed elaboration for each pillar and then how to manifest these concepts. So, the most important is how do you deliver your ideas so that the message is conveyed faster and full understanding. This is the thing that 
many students need so that you can do the best presenting to your lecturers, your examiners. Okay, what is the manifestation of the architecture design concept? Architecture concept is the big idea, a start of a design that adds art, flavor to solve problems and potential on a site. So to get understanding of the concept in school is the best thing because it is the shortcut for the actual work. So when you are graduating, the lecturer, the, your boss will not talk to us about this anymore. We just simply ask you to design. And then it's not about 14 weeks anymore. It will be two weeks work and then produce it. So pillars, how do we find these pillars? Three pillars of architecture concept. Okay, so um, the first concept, they have, the, the, they have three parts, okay? The number one, uh, I put it as 2.1, the concept approach. And then number two is the people or problems and potential because um, this is the, the hardest part where the, a lot of things uh, dwell with this. And then lastly is the site where you have the site and typology. Because of this site and typology, there is no two architecture that is same in this world. Although you are taking a photo stat, put um, um, like a Bilbao Museum from the original location to Malaysia, it's still not the same thing. It still have different in terms of uh, contextual response, uh, culture and so on. So the concept will not be the same thing and will not be the complete if these three pillars of architecture concept is not addressed, okay? So you must have these three um, to deal before you uh, before you proceed to complete your concept, okay? So if you um, have a concept, for example, student asks, if I just want to have a wave as my concept, is it okay, is it wrong, is it right? So my answer is actually, it's not wrong, but it's also not right because uh, it is half cooked um, um, method. It is not a complete concept. You must have to completely solve these three. Okay, so let's go to the first one, concept approach. There are five types of concept approach that um, I study and then I uh, summarize into a simple one for you students and uh, fellow, fellow friends to look at. Okay, number one is problem solving. Number two is philosophical ideas and then serendipitous discovery. Next would be the artistic innovation and as a, as a whole, it is symbiotic approach. Let's go one by one so that I can explain detail. Problem solving. This is one of the easiest concept approach that uh, students uh, should learn and then students also must at least try once. There are thousands of methods to solve any single problem. Usually, the architect see this solution as the best, but sometimes the outsiders may and always see other solutions better. In the end, the architect is the person who deal with the client's needs. You must remember because the architect who deal with the client because client has bringing his own problems and potential. So this is one example I uh, take from the big architect. First, you start with the site. 
you study the site. You get the uh, uh, brief from the student, from the lecturer, sorry, from the client. So um, maybe it becomes like that after you study the site. And then you impose the typology into the site and then um, the other needs in the buildings. Next would be um, solve the people uh, problems and potential. So in the end, the design is completed like that. So this is the example of Big Architect, New York 57 West. This um, the very simple approach of problem solving in design. Uh, this method um, need to be studied very, very uh, hard. It's not as easy as he thought because um, what he just uh, solved is um, only for the um, client's need, but he didn't show how he solved the contextual response um, and then uh, the culture's needs surrounding the site. Of course, I believe uh, big architect Biak Ingel already uh, solved all these uh, contextual uh, response uh, problems and potentials. But what he shows here is just as basic as possible how he come up with this design. So uh, as a student, you can use this method. There is no wrong with this. You can start at least one time when you are uh, solving a design, okay? Okay, so number two, philosophical ideas. Philosophical idea lives in the mind of the creator and can never be proven. This type of idea, however, can still have vast residual effects. For example, the idea of eternal recurrence. Some students take quotes from architects and then make it it like a philosophical ideas. Actually, quotes by architects is not enough because architecture philosophy has deep thought process. Looking at the one single project is not enough also to understand one's philosophy. You must at least look at maybe 10 years of one's architect's journey to understand how the philosophy works. Okay, for example, in um, the one that I show here is sketches of Santiago Calatrava. See, this um, uh, Santiago Calatrava is uh, quite famous architect, uh, more famous uh, in the early 2000s compared to now. Um, but his philosophy is the one that always interests me because um, his philosophy is actually um, studying anatomy of human and animals and nature. And then because of his, um, because he is um, a trained architect and also engineer at the same time. So he used his um, philosophy to create buildings. So when you see uh, design uh, like this, the birds are the second one is actually the eye. And even he just simply draw a hand and then suddenly it becomes the structure. Actually, this is how he interpret um, anatomy. And then he studies um, endoskeletons, bones, and how these endoskeletons works with muscles. And he translates one at a time to become structures or forms of his buildings. So with this actually need a lot of uh, studies, some sketches, and also a lot of uh, configurations. So with this alone, you um, need to delve into this method very deep so that you can um, gain your own, uh, your own philosophy. As a student, 
I feel you want, if you want to go for this method, yes, you can, but allow yourself to study one type of architecture, your own style for at least the whole uh, session of uh, degree and then masters and then practicing it. Then actually you can uh, gain, be, uh, strongly become, to have your own philosophy. But this is not the, the only point. That is the next one, which is artistic innovation, number three. When you are actually have your own philosophy like Santiago Calatrava, this is one example, Valencia City. It's done by him, Santiago Calatrava. Okay. Um, this is the part where um, the, the, in the previous slide, I show that there is a one eye because actually this um, building, the science center is representing the eye, seeing because um, the concept of this um, science center, because um, you know, you see um, eye, you see all the um, technologies, uh, beauty of nature and so many things through your eye. And then this is the eye that he's actually creating. Since eye is not easy, easily can be um, built as a spherical building. So what he did cleverly, he create the lake as the reflection to, to create the full eyeball. And actually, if you see this part actually is you know, you can um, fold up, so it can be opened up. So it's like the eye and then exposing the iris inside. That's how uh, the beauty of design is. So as an architect, um, I try to simplify this to be, um, there are three types of artistic innovation, which is the metaphor, biomimicry and abstract. Biomimicry and metaphor is two similar things because um, most of the time, um, biomimicry is um, mimicking um, at the nature. That's why it is bio, the nature, and mimicry is copy. So most of the time it's about that. And metaphor is very similar, but in these two terms has been used in different era, metaphor, architecture metaphor of this and that usually been used in the um, early 2000 or maybe earlier than that in the 90s in Malaysia and then lately in the after 2010 the biomimicry words is being used more compared to metaphor but from my opinion it is uh, very same thing and then another one is abstract abstract usually come from the word art itself, and then um, it actually come uh, with the, uh, for example, like, uh, you know, uh, uh, different kind of uh, art style, like cubism um, from the painting, then you translate into architecture, and then the, the works of sculpture uh, by, uh, by using um, unique materials like stair, like, uh, um, like what's that called, um, you know, buloka, basi, or I mean, st steels, timber, and so on. And then you translate into architecture. Very, some very little students try to use um, abstract method uh, from painting or interpretation of certain ideas to translate become architecture because this is the harder part compared to the biomimicry and metaphor. Biomimicry and metaphor is quite easy because you study even, for example, fingers alone, you can uh, form into many kinds of creations. Even this one hand, you have, you know, um, many ways to fold your fingers, you know, and that alone can create unique types of uh, design even talking about that can can be very long but it doesn't
matter now. What matter is the next one. Because once you have philosophy and the um, artistic innovation method, you will keep on doing the process of testing, sketching, um, create models. And that's why serendipitous discovery and other uh, steps of concept is being uh, introduced here. It is the idea that he's coincidentally developed without the intention of the inventor. That's the start. Manual sketches, physical model is the fastest way to discover, especially for first years, um, you know, you only have access to this. You are not allowed to use computer yet. Why? Because um, you must always remember the computer is at the head and then in, your, in the brain, that is your biggest computer. And then your hand, your hand is the fastest printer. Either it is printing on a sheet of paper or printing it as a, as a shape of a model. So you can do it both. So the thing is, when you are in the so first, uh, first year students, you will see this, um, the one, this, uh, you know, these uh, models has been developed in the first year, usually uh, first semester of the architecture. You will uh, learn this because this is actually uh, to polish your skills and then um, to delve into your art, you know, because uh, in your inside your yourself, there must be certain art um, style that you want to do. So this is the thing that you are going to uh, uh, polish yourself. At the same time, after being teaching a few years from foundation to masters, I've seen actually um, some students have consistency when, for example, this um, model using a certain angle of shapes. And then actually um, this student that I'm showing this model, he's already graduated his degree, you know. Um, his architecture style is still almost similar to what he did in the first year. What I'm saying is that um, students develop what they love. And when they discovered the right path of what they love, they will continue doing it. So um, once they already find something that is they comfortable of because of this uh, practice, serendipitous discovery, and then relate back with the um, philosophy and then relate back with the uh, artistic um, innovation, um, hard work of um, pushing your, your uh, technique, your skills, actually uh, proven that you are um, you are carving yourself to be the right architect, the very, very unique architect. Okay, so um, next is the number, uh, the one, next one, sorry, is computer-aided discovery. This uses a computer in order to widen the possibilities of research and numeric possibilities. Okay, um, if you see uh, Santiago Calatrava uh, sketches and some buildings, uh, what he did is actually, he, during his time when his, his golden era, actually computer has not been very well developed. Uh, the 3D printing also not yet well developed. So he sculpted his building with his own hand to create what he wanted. But now with um, 3D printing, uh, you can discover a lot more possibilities. With proper um, uh, practice, you know, when I said um, your brain is your computer, your hands are the printer, and now you use better tools to create more interesting uh, 
forms. This is the the way that you do it because you know some of the things that can't be uh, done by your own hands. You did formulas to create certain things, and then emergence of the emergence of the uh, what's that parametric architecture. Parametric architecture emerged from this uh, computer aided discovery. So um, that's why it is always related to serendipitous because when you start doing certain form, what you need to actually, you maybe at one angle, you already like it, but the other angle, you need different formula, you know? So when you have different formula, and then suddenly it sparks, okay, maybe accidentally, accidentally you um, get something else which is maybe unique to yourself and you like it. And okay, now this is my final uh, form of the building. So this is the, the part of serendipitous discovery where you using computer as tool. Okay, I believe so far you guys are doing okay. So let's move on. Symbiotic approach. Combining two ideas, you know, two or more ideas. So when you have um, certain ideas, you want to combine, for example, like these two uh, robots become another robot. Some of you might know this, but some maybe not. This is a quite old uh, robot coming from Evangelion and then with Iron Man and maybe you can create a new one, but it's your own interpretation, which part of the build, uh, part of the, uh, form is going to be Iron Man, uh, which part will be Evangelion, but it is your own way. But in this example, is the shape of Evangelion with the color scheme of Iron Man. It can be reversed, right? For example, um, in the shape of the Iron Man, but it is the, the color scheme of Evangelion with the uh, you know different kind of helmet it can be that way too it is totally up to your interpretation how you want to um, absorb these two ideas together so you are the author of your own creation so uh, with this you can create so many beautiful uh, methods of concept but remember this is only one part of the concept which is the approach all right so let's move on to the uh, number two people who are actually the problems and potential people is the biggest problem in design why because you as a student um from your point of understanding, you are only deal with the lecturer. But at the same time, the lecturer have to think for you how the client is, the end user, the public, and so many with so many factors, which is function of the building, privacy issues, safety issues, comfort of the spaces, cultural context or special needs. So there are so many things that you have to think. So students, you will learn the simplest function of building to more sophisticated building topology that don't require expert within the first three years. So um, start with your own house and then become bigger and, uh, and then you move on to the more sophisticated thing with more complex, more contextual, uh, cultural uh, response. You have to um, make the building become 
smaller in terms of privacy and bigger uh, public spaces. And then there are so many complicated things. But you, you will learn this um, one at a time. Okay. However, there is a way to solve this thing. I will talk about that later. Let's go to the number three of the concept, which is the site. Okay, so there are a few things that you must consider. Site analysis is the most important part of the concept. I wish I can have a different session, just talk about site analysis. But um, today we talk about concept. So site analysis, I have to push it away. So we only focus on concept. Just a quick one, concept, uh, I mean site analysis. Um, many students and most of the students usually only performing data collection. Data collection is only first step of site analysis. It is not analysis yet. Analysis must be done another step after you do the data collection. And um, most of the time, um, I give you a quick example. Most of the time, site analysis, you must question why. For example, um, this site has a very busy road and one side and the other side is very clear. So the busy road most of the time in the morning and then in the evening at certain hours. And then that's it. I was quite shocked because there is no analysis from that point. However, there are more, for example, why it is highly traffic during that time. There must be a reason. So the analysis might go to, it must be because of people are going to work. And then another time, which is the evening, is because of people coming back from work to home. So that is the analysis. Example. Another one is when you have traffic is high in the site area, you will also uh, discover air pollution, noise pollution. So those are the um, chain reaction from the data collection. Okay. Um, other than that would be uh, how you are handling SWOT analysis and also five senses when you are doing site analysis. This is the part also need to be polished more in terms of your own uh, understanding. Maybe not today, it's not enough time. However, um, I will create a different session uh, for this. Um, but when you are doing site analysis, either you putting in SWOT or five senses, must remember um, uh, one more thing, which is um, ask the question to each data with sustainable uh, questions, which relate to the economy, relate to the uh, environment, and also culture, cultural context. When you ask questions that relate to this, you get solid answers, solid analysis. All right. <clears throat> uh, besides uh, site analysis, the site itself must have building context, history, vegetation, local issues, and legal frameworks. Legal frameworks at the at this level, uh, for example, um, degree, um, you need to understand uh, what type of land it is. Uh, is it private or government or is it um, what uh, different kinds of um, uh, building typology that can be done there? Is it only for industry or commercial building? And then you, you got to understand the uh, setbacks of the 
for the site. So all this, you got to, you know, you have to train yourself, go to the authority, ask questions with them about the site that you are doing in. And actually, it helped you a lot to um, perform better in the future. Okay. So other things like all these uh, building history, vegetation, local issues, is a very basic, but this is the thing that you must go through for the site. And the next one is the typology. This is another um, important part of the uh, concept. When you are doing certain building typology, there are a few things that you must study. Number one is the building typology itself. You must remember you got to be specific. Always specific. When you are talking about specific, um, for example, um, you are uh, you want to do your your lecturer say uh, this master you are doing science center. So be specific. So each student might have different kinds of science center, right? So one of the example, okay, maybe um, aeronautic science center. So when you are doing aeronautic science center, you do building typology that is exactly about that, aeronautic. Don't study science center in general. It will be totally different thing. It has different um, space requirement. It has different um, uh, user and user uh, requirement. All right. The next one is precedent study. This is another um, things that maybe people, students do not understand the difference between building typology study and precedent study. <clears throat> um, Give me one second. <clears throat> okay. Precedent study <clears throat> is actually a, a study for of a building to solve the problem that similar to your problem okay so you have a problem precedent study is actually looking for answers of similar problems to yours it might not be necessarily same building typology for example, again, so you are, uh, for example, you are doing science center in a site that is very, very narrow. Narrow, like uh, maybe 40 meter width with um, 200 meter long. So with that kind of um, uh, I, situation, you have to find precedent study that give same answer to your problem. Maybe you need to find a very narrow long building that have um, you know you must able that answers your problem so you are studying how the architect answer to that problem at the same time looking for potentials when you are doing this kind of precedent study so I hope you can understand the difference between the two, building typology and precedent study. It is separate thing. So when you have these two types of building study, then at the same time, you must list down what kinds of problem you are solving. So these two must able to solve whatever you need to know. And that's what architecture is all about. Okay, and one last thing is this one. Most of the time, student always think as a user. If you have time 
switch your mind think differently think like a building owner why because you are doing architecture you are you have to do design the building as a whole you are not doing a building only for user and i mean um, for example science center you are not doing the building for the visitors alone you have to do the total complete of the building example library as a user what you know about library is you go to the entrance you see a counter um, register yourself as a, a library user get tickets and um, cards and so on go to the library or no go to the computer to search what book and then from what book you go to the uh, book sections right from book sections you take your book what you need and then go to back to the counter um, register the book under your name and leave that is only user experience but that not is not the whole building because there are a lot more things happen behind that counter so when you think like a building owner the library first of all as a library owner what do you must have number one security security of your products of your things number two flow flow of your stuff and flow of the users and then number three where you gonna hide all the ugly parts of your building so when you have that okay so when you think like a building owner you start to design building as a whole where have public and private and then all these overlapping spaces which is semi public and semi private when you have this you know the gradients of privacy you must identify it so after now when you think like a building owner then you can okay now i know more what i know is that behind the counter they are receiving books from returning books location part they must have sorting area from the sorting area they also have another part which is the auditor checkbook is it um, fully complete or some pages missing you know already done that part then sorting send back to the um, original rack and so on so there are many more steps that returning the book and then that's not all think about the numbers of your own stuff librarians that work for you how many you need one at the counter one at the sorting space one that send back to books and then one who only check the uh, computer server and so on actually there are a lot you need uh, more than five stuff maybe more for a small library and then it's not it's, that's not all your stuff must need their own space resting space for your stuff rest um, you need um, offices meeting rooms just for your for you and your stuff and so on so there are more things that you have you will discover when you switch your mind instead of think as an user but now and start from today think differently as the building owner we you will get there you got to train yourself later and and actually when you do this you able to be 
very strong uh, architect. Okay, so now already go through all three parts of the concept. Let's conclude this. We have concept approach, we have site building typology, and then people where you have to solve the problems and potential. So, example, KL Modern Art Gallery, folded architecture as center of art culture in Pasar Seni. This is an example of a proposal. Okay, but behind this, these words are not just words, not just making it look cool, but this, the whole thing is what I call the concept, the complete concept. Why? You have to dissect it. Folded architecture, that is your concept approach. Center of the art culture is the solving problems and potential, you know? And location in Pasasani is the site. So when you are doing a proposal, this is how you write down your topic, your biggest topic, and then how do you set this? So with this concept, now your proposal, your project becomes complete. This word alone able to give full insight of what you are trying to propose in the final presentation later. When you have this, it is already almost complete. What the lecturers, the examiners want to see is your product, right? So when you are doing this, let's try this. Maybe um, this semester or next semester, don't worry, okay? So now, we are just completed our first part, no second part. So the third part is the manifest, the concept. Okay, give me one second. I <clears throat> okay, so you need to sketch, okay? because architect read drawings and it is proven 80% effective. Architects and lecturers easily picked up and understand faster the idea is could be conveyed instead of essay writing. This uh, sketch is actually my uh, student uh, in UITM. What he did is sketch all his uh, ideas and all the uh, studies that he did as a quick one uh, we can see that he understand what he wanted to do what he wanted to convey second part is reading the diagrams from this sketch let's try to zoom in maybe we can see a little bit detail so example like this one experiential path he has different methods of experiential path just to tell the lecturers and examiners there are more than two or three types of experiential path that human is actually working experiencing all right that's not the thing that i'm gonna talk about the talk what i want to say is how how people convey the message very fast and then next is actually segmented this you know when you give these segments it's actually very easy you know we architect we think in different um you know segments different segments have different uh, functions so this is also another way to making things clearer.
Besides that, infographic communication. This is actually the universal language. Icons means the same thing in order in other language. For example, like car. In English, it is car. In Malay, it is crater. In other language, uh, Mandarin or uh, Hindu have different types of uh, you know, uh, language, but it is still a car. You know? So, infographic communication actually is making your message become faster. You simply impress your audience and at the same time add unique zing to appeal in your presentation. Easy to change colors and photos and text. So it is actually helping you and also the examiners and lecturers to understand your idea. And then add mind map to it. It become a lot more better to effectively um, telling your ideas and reduce bombastic words. You can use bombastic words, but only for certain punchline, not every sentence. And then simple explanation always needed because car alone cannot be the biggest answer. You maybe need to know what kind of car some explanation is actually needed. So that actually helps and becoming more effective. For example, this one, they have certain explanation, simple and effective. So that's how you uh, arrange your concept and then making it simplified so that you can able to, uh, you know, less talking about the concept and then if the lecturer and examiners can easily and fast understand your idea, it's easier to move on to the design and then the rest of the drawings and the whole presentation. Okay, so executing the concept manifestation, you need the steps. So, these are the normal steps that students are going through. Number one is start investigation on the first week of the semester. And then you go there, you identify immediately problems and potential by observation and also by talking to surrounding people. Because these problems and potential always related to people. Induced concept approach. Okay, this is the thing that I'm talking about. Five things, all right? Then elaborate. Then you this okay. Um, you just able if you can explain deeper, then that's better. If you need simply uh, explain a little bit, a lecturer can understand. Then that's good. So, and then besides that, you also must solve the problems that you identify, okay? Once you solve, you sketch. You sketch to solve, you sketch to elaborate. This is the way you do it. And then at the same time, maybe you have different architecture style that you have compared to the, um, the other, your friends. So put it, in your um, architecture design. And last but not least, in the presentation, is your, um, the most impressive must be infographic. Nowadays, um, this is the things that you must uh, do it, what you have to do. You must always, um, you know, you have friends, so you just need to, um, share with your friends so infographics icons for example maybe um, uh, you and friends maybe two or three always share things together so that um, you don't have to work hard so this is how you can work smart or on the presentation so when you 
going through this, this is the always the number, right? 14 weeks of per semester. <clears throat> I usually separate into this 482. 4 is the executing the site investigation, site analysis, um, introduce concept, introduce solution, and then the eight number in the middle is for you to develop your design, develop more technical works, drawings, and so on, and allow yourself two weeks to, to do final presentation. When I go through this, actually, it's um, actually quite easy for students. What you have to do is actually when you hit two weeks, before the final you must stop and then immediately or uh, immediately design your presentation <clears throat> okay um, all right looks like it's about to conclude formulating an architecture design concept is to unveil the ideas effectively and at the same time reducing the stress level of reading and elevate the understanding for a better assessment. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you for listening. Thank you, you're very sure me. So basically there are so much we learn so i hope all the audience actually jot down the key points because especially for uh those who are new to the architecture course i think this really clearly explains how the design process from the starting and how the product will be uh, how the outcome should be like how to make a good architecture so uh if you guys didn't uh, catch all the key points uh Actually, the, this session will be uploaded in our YouTube soon. So you, you can actually uh, look it back at our Masa YouTube. Okay. So uh, once again, thank you, Air for asking me for the insight. Okay. Thank you. Welcome. You are welcome. So uh, the audience have been hitting in some interesting questions. So mm -hmm. firstly, it's from Celine. He has, she has a few questions. So first is... How do you know what's the style that suits you? Will it be wasting time testing different styles? Yeah, that's the first question. Okay. Uh, should I answer this one first? Yeah. Okay. What style that suits you? Uh, of course, this is um, sometimes a very hard question, but um, if you uh, look into yourself, there are things that actually you love. For example, like uh, me, when I was a, a kid, I used to love to play with origami. And then when I joined architecture, um, I got lost because I didn't know that um, origami is actually is part of art and it can be architecture too. I discovered that at the end of my degree final semester actually um, and when i in, when i test it i really love what i did you know um so knowing what style that suits you is not um wasting time the whole process of the degree itself alone actually will make you find what do you really like and sometimes marks don't matter when you really when you love at certain things for example like me when i discovered that i love um folded architecture because it related directly well, from origami actually i happy with my uh, end product and the marks didn't matter as long as i happy doing it and at the same time i solve whatever i um Whatever the the problems in the project, actually those are the things that um giving you uh start. 
sometimes it's um, not enough um, to discover um, when you know when you are doing in the first year and then the second year you want to try different things it's always happened that way but um, don't worry about that what you are doing is actually um, already the right thing because your mind your mind is actually um, doing it for you without you are noticing it you are already on the right path it's just that you don't sometimes you don't feel you you feel this uh, uh, not confident enough because you always put marks that matters for example when you style do one style for example for the architecture i got c but when i do um uh very um, cubic building i got a i it didn't mean that that thing is your style is just because you did it simple building you solve all the um, contextual response culture things you solve all the matters but in your heart you still like for example for the architecture those are the things that you know you there is no wasting time in architecture there is no wasting time that's all I think you should go happy with your own style. Okay, so the next question will be, uh, after graduating and working in the real world, how can we still use this concept of our own style? With our own style. Okay, um, this is actually another uh, interesting question. Very uh, uh, important at the same time because, yes, all of us want to be uh, architect of your own and also uh, want to be uh, designing everything okay uh, when you just started work you are under your own boss correct you you have a boss your boss have your own style the his own style or her own style okay you always remember 10% one at one time okay for example, your boss always like modernism, but you like contemporary. Con this is the example, okay? You just induce your style ten percent, then allow the boss idea concept ninety percent. It's okay. One at a time, you know, one step at a time. If you able to induce ten percent of your own style and then merge with your boss's idea. This is actually one um, achievement because next step is add one more, 10%. And one day, the boss will let you do everything on your own. And that is, is where you start to flare. So I hope that answer your second question, Salim. Mm -hmm. So uh, the next one is, uh, what do you think your style is? Well, I'm guessing your style is origami style because you just mentioned. Okay. So until today, how are you using it? Um, okay. Um, very interesting question. Okay. Yes. Um, I started um, to love uh, origami folded architecture at the end of my degree. Um, however, this um, couldn't be translated directly into work, my um, work, because, um, you know, we in Malaysia, we have uh, clients, budgets, and so many things, um, uh, you know, that not allowing you to do your, what do you love to do? But like I said, putting 10% at a time, actually do work, okay? Don't um, be very, very ambitious, okay? If you have the um, your own budget to open up your own firm immediately after graduate, that's the best. But um, it still couldn't answer the client's need. So again, when I just induce 10% of my style, 
to the client and the client is happy i it is achievement for me then the next client will be more next 10% bigger so with that kind of step i um somehow able to uh, do what i wanted to do and uh, i have one or two projects that i really enjoy working on it so hope that answers all your questions me okay so next question is from samlen mm -hmm. uh, do you mean concept is not shape but provide solid solution to problems if so why we are so tied up to form and shape okay um concept approach is actually um where do you induce your architecture style and art if you uh, look at the uh, slides that i went through just now um the artistic innovation the philosophy and then the serendipitous discovery all those are architecture uh, concept where it is the form the shape coming from but i don't want to put in uh, uh, you know you, i cannot say that it must be certain type of shape it must be coming from you right but um that's that's how i i uh, set the 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 concept methods is it must be um, artistic innovation i just give a very general term you know i cannot say it must be uh, you know origami method cannot So next will be from Nurul. So she's basically asking uh, the simple explanation for design concept. Is it just what we are inspired from? Okay. Um, I, 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 at the start, I just mentioned that, um, uh, like I uh, said, if my concept is wave, is it right or wrong? Right. So um, like I said, the answer is half right. And half wrong because concept must able to solve not only uh, designing. You must also solve and solve. There are two things that you must solve: clients or end user, people, and the site itself. So it's not only form making. Concept you don't do form making alone. It must be completely uh, solving also. Yeah, I hope that make you have a better thing in design concept in the role. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Anything. Okay. Um, basically, what we inspired from the, the the question is about inspire. Yes, inspiration can come from anywhere. Like that's why I said, um, they can come from everything under the sun. Um, is it and uh, like a metaphor or uh, another one is what uh, biomimicry because those you know those nature things. They are so beautiful, flowers, um, animals, um, or flying animals, under sea water animals. There are so many beautiful animals. You can use any kind of inspiration. At the same time, if you can solve whatever you are having to solve with that kind of inspiration, that is the beauty. <clears throat> okay. Okay, so next will be from Sarah. What do you think of Malaysia architects concept? Is it good enough to compare with other countries? <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay. Um, Malaysia. Such a question. <laughs> okay. First of all, Malaysia, we have a very unique uh, culture. Uh, we have very long history. Uh, we also have... Um, that that history we have uh, facing different era of um, occupation from the uh, Japan to the British, all those things actually influence our architecture in terms of history. Okay, um, you can see the uh, traditional Malay houses, Chinese Malay Chinese uh, houses, and then um, Peranakan where. There is a lot of combination, right? Uh, you, if you study history, those are the beauty. Because why? Number one, um, they solve 
the environmental issue. Number two, the culture context. They are Chinese. For example, Chinese Peranakan. The concept is coming from the Chinese and then have some in, uh, English influences and then the location is Malacca, for example. It solves everything. The, the needs of the environment, the needs of the human of that time, around 1600, right? So actually, they already solve everything and the concept is very well jived together. There is no wrong in, uh, in their, their, the concept, you know? Um, yeah, that, everything is there. And, you know, that's why it's very unique. Malaysian architecture is already very unique, you know? Um, uh, you can't find this kind of architecture in other places. For example, Melaka and Penang maybe have similar um, architecture language, but it's not exactly the same. Because, uh, for example, Melaka uh, shop houses, the lots are very long and narrow, but you can't find the same in Penang. So, I say it is very... Um, uh, is it good enough to compare to other countries? Yes, it is very good because the architecture solves the needs of the environment era of that time and also um, the it is um, not too harsh to the Chinese and then not too uh, strong on the English culture. And then uh, there are Malays and so on. Everything is well, well jive in the design. I don't see any problem. I hope that answers. So actually, Malaysia is so, so many cultural influenced architecture. Yes, so yes. I just don't compare. <laughs> yes, yes. It's, it's very hard to compare. And uh, Malaysia architecture is very beautiful. What we have to do is, again, we at, for example, 2020, um, instead of um, looking upwards why we why, why shouldn't we look back what we had and then reinterpret in the modern ways especially 2020 method style we jive that again you know it could be beautiful because um, we have new technology we have new um, space need you know users need we already changed so why not we uh, re revisit again those old concepts yeah. okay so uh More, next question is mm -hmm. from sender tan uh he uh he actually mentioned like he has a very unconstant style like this time he like this style but after that in the time we go back with a previous style. So, will there be ways to get a right style for inconsistency? Yeah. Hmm. In terms of uh, inconsistency, how should we uh, um, reduce it? Actually, um, uh, if you look at uh, I quite don't understand the question. Um, let me read again. Okay. Um, finding the right style for yourself. Um, again, um, um, sometimes um, look at what you what, look at your hobby sometimes um, uh, because when I discover my hobby, um, I can, can work together with architecture. I try with my students, you know. Um, one of my students, um, currently uh, final year, um, the student actually love to do calligraphy. So I said, why not you try to combine this idea of calligraphy um, art of writing and then jive this um, style with architecture. Um, although 
that student is already in the final year, actually that student can um, uh, perform better at the same time um, enjoy designing because you know hobby is the thing that you must you always enjoy right so um, you don't have the hate um, um, energy you know you only have love energy so with that actually um, able to motivate the students um, to um, create more to detail up the work more and at the same time um, finishing it to the best because it a lot of motivation in that thing. So um, uh, maybe I I like to say hobby. If you can merge with your um, architecture, why not? It could be interesting way to uh, improve yourself and then get the right style. Yeah, I hope that answers your question, Zander. Right, so another question from Samlun. So, uh, do you think there is a mismatch between what we learn and what is happening in the market? Because he mentioned that he loves his studio work, but uh, that doesn't apply when it comes to internship because of uh, money is always the And uh, are we being too far from the reality? Then how can we educate the public, especially the client? Hmm, there are so many layers of uh, needs here. <laughs> okay, um, yes, I also discover uh, my, my students um, become, uh, you know, uh, become becoming, uh, how to say, don't like architecture after uh, they join the internship, uh, probably because of um, the exposure itself is uh, not um, suitable, not the thing that that student wanted, and actually um, it becomes a deviate from architecture. And then that student become okay lah. As long as I graduate, I happy, and then I do something else. I don't want to do architecture. Normal. I have seen this a lot of students having that problem. So how to actually? Yes, again, there are so many layers of thing. Are we far from the reality? Actually, we are doing okay in Malaysia. Um, for example, um, I just say simple things. Um, housing designs, okay. Um, the current trend are actually doing fine. Um, although, um, in general, it didn't uh, jive with my uh, taste of um, housing design, but it's okay because that is the trend. You know, um, um, you... As a designer, you must solve your problem, P problem, the people problem, which is at this time, client, right? So if you solve the client's problem, you are a good designer. That's all. Because you are not, um, what to say, artist. There are two things you, um, you must be um, I, uh, understand. Artist and um, designer. Okay? Artist it's um, only satisfy yourself but designer you must satisfy other people uh, needs right so artist you want to do painting you put all your emotions on a canvas or sculpture um, and everything else so if public look at your artwork some people like it some people don't right so what if he can sell, he happy. If he didn't sell, he still happy because the what he solved is his own uh, thing. His, uh, because he is the uh, client himself. So when you are a designer, you must solve many things, public uh, and also uh, client. So as long as um, the client happy with your design and the public able to uh, able to accept this design as the new trend then you are actually on the right track you are doing good in design there's no wrong again if you have 10 percent of your own style you put there then that's better uh, 
What's your question, Sam? Uh -huh. That's all for our Q&A session. Ah, okay. Yeah, so uh, so a big shout out to Architect Forest Hume. If you guys want any more useful tips like this one, like, like this uh, session, you can subscribe to his YouTube channel. As you I can have, see. yeah, I already <laughs> start a few. Um, okay lah. I, I have a lot more to do, but um, in, a, in progress. Yeah, so everyone subscribe and give him full support. Thank so you. the channel is uh, Faris Yumi, as you can see from the slide. Okay, so uh, once again, a very thank you to architect Faris Hilmi for this session. Thank and you. welcome. Thank you everyone for joining us tonight for this online lecture. We hope you all enjoyed it. So do keep in touch with our master's Instagram and Facebook page for the next online lecture. Until then, have a nice night and we'll catch you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Okay, bye.